science time, develop a model of space systems. Let's talk today about, let's, let's name this the rotation, the rotisserie chicken, the rotation and revolution of celestial bodies and the effects thereof. Or name it whatever you want. This is what I'm naming it. The rotation and revolution of celestial bodies and the effects thereof. I like that. It sounds like this is a scientific paper. Do you understand what this means? Let's have, let's have someone to explain this. What's, what's kind of the key word of this structure here? You. Yeah. Celestial bodies. So let's define celestial bodies real quick. What's a celestial bodies? Yeah. Um, celestial bodies are objects. Space. Let's give some examples. Stars. That's a great first example. What's another one? No, let's not put aliens. Asteroids. Big time rush, yep. Big time rush is a celestial body. <laughs> Fate. The sun, the star is, the sun is a star. So we just, we'll just put stars. What else? Planets. Moons. Yeah, well, uh, uh, things like, we can include things like galaxies and black holes. Ethan? Pulsars. Pulsars, sure. Which are actually a type of star too, but we'll put it because I like it. Pulsars. Um, yeah, there's all celestial bodies. Thank you. Milky Way. Yeah, galaxies. Let's just put that. Galaxies. All of these are celestial bodies. They're just things in space. Okay? So if we're talking about the rotation and revolution, let's now define rotation and revolution. Are they the same thing? Are rotation and revolution the same? No. Ah, yep, you're right. They're not the same. So they both have to do with what? What's the comparison between rotation and revolution? They are both what? Um, specifically in what kind of movement? Circle. Yeah, circular movements. They're both circular movements. Like circular movements. Revolving. But they're different in that... Yes. yes. Circular movements, but rotation is spinning how? Uh, Gunner, stand up. Gunner, stand up. Come over here so the camera can see. Is it okay? Wait. You want to be on the camera? Yes, I do. Okay. Come over so the camera can see you. Ro rotate. Thanks. Uh, revolve around the podium. There you go. Now burn that into your memory, everyone. Thank you, Gunner. Go sit down. Good job, Gunner. Yay. Let's give him a round of applause. Round of applause. Okay. A vast applauding. Okay. Spin about how was Gunner spinning? What was he spinning around? No, 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 in the rotation. What was he spinning around when he was rotating? Sorry. Yeah, himself. His, what would we say? Gravity. Some of us will say axle, but that would be slightly incorrect. His what? Rotating about its axis. Axis. Rotation is moving around an external object. So I did both. Yeah, he did both. So he rotated the first time, and the second time he revolved around the podium. And the Earth does both. Good. Yeah, so let's, let's draw a little diagram where in this, in our analogy, the Earth now is Gunner and the podium is the Sun. It's not to scale. So let's draw, let's draw a little diagram. Where does the Sun go? In the middle. Let's put it in the middle. Should we draw a face on the Sun? No, this is science class. That's too childish. Okay, and then we have the Earth. So the Earth rotates, rotates, and it also revolves. It rotates and it revolves. Does anything revolve around Earth? The moon revolves around Earth. Hear the moon. That does the moon rotate? Yes. Yeah, it does. In fact, the moon revolves and it rotates. And both for the moon, the period. You know what a period is? What is a period? Yeah, how long it takes for something to happen. Period is how long. 
It takes for a periodic thing to happen. What does it mean for it to be periodic? We've talked about this before. No. Yeah, it, it repeats is what I'm looking for. It repeats. So the period is how long in the moon. So how, does, how long does it take for Earth? Let's do a little column here for Earth. Sorry, I got started on the moon. We'll do that in a second. Rotation and revolution. We'll do for both of them. How long does it take for the Earth, for the earth to rotate? 24 hours. <gasps> 24 hours. That's a day. 24 hours. One day is one rotation of planet Earth. When you're a child or when human was a child when the civilizations were young, people really thought that the sun revolved around the earth, that the sun, that when the, the sun was moving through the sky, in mythology pulled by Apollo, or rolled across the sky by a dung beetle in Egyptian mythology, very great mythology, wrong, but great mythology, um, but people really thought that the sun was actually physically moving. And the sun does move, but it's not moving through our sky. We think the sun is moving through the sky because the earth is rotating. Agree with me? Yes. So it takes, so one day is one planet earth. How long does it take for the, the moon, or sorry, for the earth to revolve around the sun? Yeah, that's one, five, five, is it point two five? Yeah, for every four years, see six, which is why we have a leap year. Okay, what about the moon? How long does it take for the moon to rotate? Well, let's start with revolve. How long does it take for the moon to go around the earth? No? About what? How long is a moon cycle? How long does it take from new moon to new moon? No, from yeah, about a month. I think it's about twenty, about twenty-eight days. It, every every day, the moon rises fifty minutes later, and eventually, over the course of a month, that means it starts out the same again. So, a full moon rises right when the sun sets, or thereabout. Um, and the new moon rises right when the sun rises, or thereabout. But that's that's all kind of sketchy. But how long does it take for the moon to rotate? Well, co coincidentally, not actually coincidentally, it's, it's because of time. But it takes the exact same amount of time. And so what this means is between these two facts, the same side of the moon is always presented to Earth. So let me grab a little visual aid here. Here's my, this is my shrunken tiki skull sculpture that Morgan Jones made me. So percent, pretend, pretend there's a sun, I don't know, Someone needs to be on camera. Gunner, come over here. You're the sun. Gunner's my son. Oh, I am. Yeah, they're right there. Okay, so pretend Gunner is the sun. And I am the earth, and this is the moon, okay? So the moon, the moon is rotating. So as I go around, as I rotate, the moon kind of stays there. But once a month, the moon also revolves around me, right? But it also rotates. So if the moon didn't rotate at all, it would be facing always the same side toward the sun. Right? If it didn't rotate at all. But it does rotate. So instead, and since it takes the same amount of time to rotate as it does to revolve, the same side of it, this little face, it's kind of spooky, this little face is always facing me. So that's why the moon always looks the same to us every night, is because the same face is always facing us. The moon itself rotates. Does this side of the moon ever get sunlight? Be very careful. We call it the dark side of the moon. Does it ever get sunlight? Sure, yeah, when it's facing this way, it's getting full sun. What do we call this phase of the moon, BT-dub? New moon. New moon. Good. Um, thank you, son. Uh, I got I to gotta gouge out its eyes a little bit here. So the dark side of the moon actually does get sunlight. It's just we call it the dark side of the moon because we don't see it. It's, it's dark in a way that, like, mysterious. Like, we don't know as much about it. Um, I was going with somewhere else with this. What was I going to say? Anyway, so the moon does revolve and it also rotates, but those two periods are the same because it's what we call tidally locked because of the tidal forces from Earth, which we also learned about in our... Remember we learned about the tidal forces when we were talking about the creation of Earth? Um, but since it's, since it's tidally locked, these two things are the same. So the same side always faces the Earth. So now let's move on to moon phases because now we're talking about the effects thereof. So we're going to talk about two things. Phases of the moon... We're going to talk about three things. Day-night cycle. We're going to talk about four things. Seasonal cycle. This is actually in the next lesson, but I'm going to talk about it now. And eclipses. Let's talk about them in that order. So the phases of the moon. Well, first of all, does the moon produce its own sunlight? No, obviously not. It's not a star. The sun produces the sunlight. The moon reflects the light from the sun. I'm going to draw a different little bit. 
God bless you. Um, God bless you. Producing sunlight. Uh, this Here's the moon. What what moon phase are we seeing here in this diagram? Um, full moon. Full moon. Because full moon. Here, here's nighttime on Earth. How can you tell? Well, it's facing the side away from the sun. And so from the night side, we would see the whole moon. That's the full moon. Okay. I'm going to have to erase it because I don't want... I could draw it further on, but that would make it seem like this happens only once a year. Because remember, this cycle is a year. As the Earth rotates, or as the Earth revolves, around. I'm going to draw the moon rotating. So that's the full moon, is when they're all kind of in a line like that. And we'll talk about a special case of that in a little while. What about when the moon is here? What are we seeing? Oops, sorry. That's not quite how it works. Yeah, this would be, you could say either crescent or gibbous. I don't know exactly how I drew it. This one, this one would probably be gibbous or half moon. Let's do it like that. Half. When it's here, That would be a half moon. I'm sorry. This one would have been crescent. You were right, Kesslin. On the test, are they going to ask us what are the phases of the moon? Yeah. Crescent. And, and by the way, is the crescent or the waning crescent? Um, waning. This would be waxing because it's, it's you can, oh, I'm sorry, it's waning. I mean, forgive me. It is the waning crescent because it's going from full moon to new moon will be over here. Yeah. New moon, which would be, this. oh, you just want, you mean like just in, Okay, so starting from full, and then it'll be, let me think. I, I'm trying to, going to try to get this so that I'm going to look in my book to make sure I put it on the right side. I don't mean the, the right side, I mean the correct side. The full moon, and then we have, uh, this is supposed to be like, the crescent here is dark. This is the waning gibbous. Last quarter. Waning crescent. I'm doing a really dumpy job of drawing these. And then the new moon. Thank you. And then we would have the waxing crescent. What are, what are the words waxing and waning are kind of like old English words? What is waxing? Next. Getting big. Getting small. first quarter, and then over here we have this, and then over here we have full moon again. So this is Wawaxia. Waxing. This is, what? What's this? What's this? New moon. What's this? Full. full moon. What's this? It's also the full moon. Because it's periodic. It happens again and again and again. It's periodic. Okay? Does it make sense why this happens? Face lift? No. It's because the sun is shining on different parts of the moon as it, as it does its own cycle. How many times does this happen in a year? No, you think it's 12 because there are 12 months, but this is not a month, is it? In fact, it's very, very close. Uh, what's, someone get a calculator real quick or do it in your head. Actually, this will be good for your math practice. What is 365 divided by? 365 divided by 28. Yep. I would, we should play some non-copyright infringement Jeopardy music. No, don't you can't, Kesslin. I'm gonna get copyright struck by YouTube, and I'm gonna they're gonna come set my house on fire. Um, yeah, so it's almost exactly what. Now do no do 364 divided by 28. It's exactly 13, isn't it? If we if the if the way the year was broken up was developed by people who thought and weren't drunk all the time, thank you, Romans. Um, it would, we would have 13 months because this is a 28-day moon phase, right? If we had 13 months, there would be exactly one moon phase per month. There would be 13 months in the year, except there would be one little day left over. So people who propose a 13-month calendar say that New Year's Day 
would not. What's all, what else is great? What else is great about twenty-eight? What kind of number? What number is twenty-eight divisible by that a lot of numbers aren't? Five. No, is twenty-eight divisible by five? Let's try again. No, what number that a lot of other numbers aren't? Is it? And what is special about seven in our time period? There's seven days in a week. So this is, uh, for a lot of reasons, this, I guess this has become my platform for talking about a 13-month year, but for a lot of reasons, 28 days in a month would be better because how many, how many weeks are in a month? Uh, about four. Well, sometimes, though, there are... Three no, there are never three. There are sometimes five, though, because of the way our dumpy months work. But if there were 28 days in a month, every month would have four Monday. Every month would end on a Saturday. There would be 30 months in the year. Every, February wouldn't look weird. That's what Will's doing this because that's his day for February wouldn't look weird. Um, no, I don't know. Write a letter to, I guess, the president of the earth and say that we need a 13-month year because this is objectively better. He won't. President of the earth. There's no such thing as that, son. Oh, God. Um, yeah, that was Kesson. That was blasphemous. You shouldn't have said that. Look at this beautiful picture that does a better job of illustrating than I did on the board. If you're watching this video... Which no one probably is, but if you're watching this video, if you're watching this video, shh, you guys need to be quiet. If you're watching this video, you can pause it to see what this says, because that would give you a better diagram. Let's move on to the day-night cycle. Why is there a day-night cycle? Why does it ever become nighttime? Because the Earth is rotating. Because the Earth rotates exactly. So it seems like the Moon and the Sun move from east to west in the sky, but actually it's the Earth rotating from west to east. Perceived motion. There's a song that I sometimes listened to by bread called something I can't remember. One of the lines says, let me try to think, it says, the sun doesn't go down, it's just an illusion caused by the world spinning around, which is true. And the point of that, metaphorically, is that you shouldn't get down about things because the world just, the sun doesn't really go down, it's just the earth spinning. Um, let's now talk about the seasonal cycle a little bit. What gives Earth seasons? Just real briefly, and this will cut into the next lesson too, but what gives Earth seasons face? The tilt of the axis. The tilt of the axis. So since Earth has an axial tilt of 23.5 degrees, here's the equator. Here's you in North America. What season is this right now that I've drawn on the board? This is winter. Yeah, because look, the sunbeams that are coming in parallel from the sun, I drew them as wavy, but they should be parallel. Where, where are they getting concentrated the most? How many sunbeams? How many sunbeams per unit area is there down here? About more. Five. Yeah, there's more than up here, and right? There's three up there. Yeah. So it's warmer here in this season than it is here. So this is our summer, and in the southern hemisphere it is winter. When now, when we get to the other side of the planet, or when we get to the other side of our orbit, when we get to the other side of our orbit. Oh, and where's where's it nighttime, by the way? Night. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I wrote them wrong. We did. We said them wrong. Write them down wrong. Thank you. Okay, and then over here, here's you again. This time you're just wearing a bikini because it's summertime. Oops, I gave it away. Summertime, and in here it's wintertime because the same reason. The parallel beams of the sun are striking that more squarely. Hey, where could you live if you liked it being summertime all the time? Yeah, the equator. And in fact, we have these things. We have these things also called the Tropic of Cancer and the... Shh, please stop talking let me speak. The Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn are 23.5 degrees north and south of the equator. Do you think that's a coincidence? Do you think that... No, 23.5 degrees of, in this case, angle, and in this case, latitude and longitude, because the tropics are the areas between that, where, where the sun can fully strike that dead on. Like the, the tropics indicate the area of planet Earth where the sun can be. That doesn't happen here. Interestingly, there's one United State of America which is below the Tropic of Cancer, and that is Hawaii. And on Hawaii, they have a one day of the year, is, or actually, I don't, it might be more than one day. But the Hawaiian Islands are, are south of the Tropic so on, they have something called Lanai Noon, where the sun is dead ahead, like right overhead, and so things cast a shadow only straight down. So instead of having oblique shadows, they, yeah, and it, it, it looks really trippy. 
it does look like a poorly rendered video game because things that are like like if you had just a pole like if you had a dry erase marker just sitting in the ground it would cast no shadow at all because the sun is right ahead and so it just looks like a floating marker on your poorly rendered video game okay last thing eclipses eclipses what's yeah. an eclipse Okay, in one word, in what other simple object eclipse? Celestial. No, what, in one word, what other very simple thing that we can see lots of in here, an eclipse is a what? Shadow. Eclipse is a shadow. An eclipse is just a shadow of one celestial body on another. Shadow of one celestial body of another is an eclipse. When can a, what, okay, what is, what is casting the shadow in a solar eclipse? The moon is casting the shadow on Earth. What is casting the shadow in a lunar eclipse? No. The sun's producing the light. The Earth is producing a shadow on the moon. During what? Let's here's a here's a trick question. Think about it. Talk with your partner for a second and think about it. What during what moon phase must the solar eclipse occur? Let's go back here. Let's look at our diagram. Here, remember, we had here's Earth. It must be the new moon. Look, during certain circumstances, the light during a new moon, remember this is our little diagram of new moon, the light can be completely blocked and the, the earth so during what moon phase the full moon the full moon, the most moon must be over here for earth to cast its shadow on it new, it must be the new moon for solar and the full moon for lunar eclipse why don't they happen every single time, why don't we get an eclipse every single time there's a full moon or every single time there's a new moon Mm. If we look at it from the side, they're really these things are orbiting. You see this? Yeah. Here's the here's the sun. Here's what we call the ecliptic. It's a perfectly straight line, which I did not draw through the sun. And the the Earth's orbit is actually slightly what we call eccentric. And then the Moon's orbit to the Earth is also slightly eccentric. And they're not nearly this much eccentric. But you can see I'm looking at this from the side. So only at certain times of year, like right here on my crappy drawing. Don't say crap. Right here. Could there be an eclipse? And then only if the moon happens to also be in that spot of its ecliptic too. Do you see what I mean? Because these orbits are not perfectly level, so to speak. If they were, there would be an eclipse every single time. How often? How many years? How often does an eclipse happen? It really does vary because these two things both have to line up. The, the Earth and the moon both have to be in the exact right spot of their orbit for it to line up. So somewhere between twice a year for a solar eclipse or once every two years for a solar eclipse and then for a lunar eclipse I think it's slightly more often uh, about the same and there's there's it's not like we can say every other July there's going to be a solar eclipse because that's just not how it works and then furthermore they happen over different parts of Earth's surface too because the moon's shadow doesn't cover the whole earth Get wrong the moon's shadow doesn't cover the whole earth because the moon's quite a bit smaller and so that in some, like, the, the special solar eclipse we had here in 2017 only happened here. It didn't happen everywhere in the world. I mean, it had a, there was a path, but it didn't happen everywhere in the world at once. August, the best place to view it was in Hawaii. Mm. Wasn't it August 8th, 2017? I, maybe it was. Um, the best view was in Hawaii. It's my grandparents. I think the best view was actually on Hawaii. It sounds like, it sounds like, wait, shh, okay, okay, okay. Let's all, let's all focus up. You can have your little side discussions in a little while. Um, but for now, do you have questions about any of this? These four things. Do you have questions about the phases of the moon? No, I don't. The day-night cycle? The seasonal cycle? Eclipses? Do you have questions about rotation and revolution? No. Yes. Well, okay, so in Hawaii, um, does that happen the entire day? Just yeah, you're talking about lanai noon, yeah, the entire day. And I think justice. Oh. Send me a comment if you're wrong. Comments are disabled. Say... The solar eclipse only happens, can only happen during a new moon, and the lunar eclipse can only happen during a full moon. Questions?